The railroad's gonna come right smack through your land, and there ain't a thing in the world that you can do to stop it. But, mister, a dollar an acre? Well, I paid $15 an acre for it. And then there's my home and the barn and the crop. Well, take it or leave it, friend. But if you won't sell, all we gotta do is call in the government. They'll confiscate your land, and then you won't get nothing. But that's the way you want it. What'll I do? I don't know. Mister! Mister! There he comes. Mister! Well? I reckon if that's the way they're gonna do it. Now you're talking sense. Can you write? No, sir. Here. Put your mark right there. I'm telling you like a friend, lady, if you won't sell, the government will take it from you. Now, you can save yourself a lot of trouble by just signing now. It's... it's so little, two dollars an acre. But... but if that's the way it is... Don't sign it, Ma. Please don't. Let's see a lawyer first. Oh, please. now you're wasting your time, son. Oh, let's I see one that. anyway, Ma. We can go to town this evening and see Judge Harvey. He'll tell you what to do. Wait till oh, you now, see him, please. Right well, here, oh, please, Ma, please. please. I suppose it can't hurt to talk to somebody first. You don't mind waiting till tomorrow, do you? Well, it won't do you any good, but whatever you say, ma'am. <laughs> no hard feelings, son. Well, I know, sir. Hey. Oh. Ah! Try to hold us up, huh? Oh, leave him alone! Jack up the price, are you? Leave him alone! Oh, oh, don't hurt him! Oh, no, no, please! Oh, leave him alone! Don't hurt him! I'll sign it. I will right now! Don't sign it, Ma. I will. My arm. Please let go. Right there, ma'am. Oh. Howdy, bud. Sir? I just said howdy. Oh. Howdy. What's your name? James. Jesse James. You own this farm? No, but Mama does. Where is she? Up the house. Thanks, bud. that owns this farm? Yes, I am. Well, my name's Barshee. I'm with the railroad. Now, we're coming through this way, you know. Yes, I heard so. I want to get this deed signed up. Now, if you'll just put your name right there. For nothing? Oh, no, no. We're paying a dollar an acre, just like to everybody else. That's the law. Everybody's getting the same thing, dollar an acre. Seems mighty little, don't it? Well, I can't help that, lady, but that's all you're going to get. So you might as well sign up now as later. You mean right this minute? Now, look, lady, we ain't got all day to hang around here. Now, you either take what I'm offering everybody else, or you'll get nothing. We'll get your land just the same. Oh, but I wouldn't dream of signing a thing like that or talk to some lawyer about it. Are you going to waste my time with some jack-leg lawyer? Your land ain't any different than anybody else's. Well, no, there's no use talking. I'm not going to sign that thing right now. Now, look, lady, I don't want to have any trouble with you. Didn't you hear her say no? Said she wasn't going to sign. Who are you? That's my son, Frank. Oh. Well, if you're so smart, how'd you like for the government to come along, condemn this land, and take it for nothing? You like it. Huh. And you better understand that I'm doing you folks a favor when I offer you a dollar an acre. There weren't no favors. Well, maybe you'd like to go to court about it. Why at that? Well, you folks have it your own way. <laughs> All right, son. No hard feelings. Frank! Kind of tricky, ain't you? Yeah. Get him, boys. Oh, Frank! Frank! I just... You ain't gonna all jump on him, are you? 
Back against the wall, you fellas. Keep your hands out of your pockets. You want to fight him, Frank? Oh, please, Frank, don't. You can keep them others from running up my back. Well, they ain't going to do anything. How are you, fellas? Jesse, stop him. Stop him. Sorry, Ma. He started it. Oh, please, Jesse, don't let him. Oh, Frank. Oh, Jesse, stop him. Stop him. To me, like he's got enough. Who's next? Think you can lick them all, Frank? I'll fight them or arrest them if they'll come at me one at a time and pile them up under the tree. You don't do nothing of the kind. Now, you men, get away from here. Do you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Well, if he ain't the tricky one. Now, get off this land. All of you. Move along. And jump. But we're still going to get this land just the same. Jesse! All right, son. What happened? Well, I don't know. It went black and I got Come something. Come on in the What's oh, happened, Mom? She fainted. No, I didn't. I just got to lay down. You better get Doc Hall. Pinky! Pinky! Yes, sir? Get on your mule and go after Doc Hall. Tell him to hurry. Yes, sir? And Pinky. Yes, sir. After you get him started, get to all the farmers this side of Liberty. Mr. Crump, Mr. Clayton, Mr. Thompson, all of them. Tell them we're going to have a meeting, an important meeting here tonight. Tell them to come as soon as they knock off work without fail. Yes, sir. And furthermore, if the St. Louis Midland don't know the way its agents are swindling the farmers. It's high time they found out. Uh, comma. Because it's the gall dangdest, dad blastedest, consanguinous outrage ever perpetrated on a law-abiding citizenry in the whole history of the world. Paragraph. Oh, oh. Trouble by gravy. Uncle Ruth? Eh? You want me to take those cuss words out, don't you? Oh, I guess so. You mean you want to swear out warrants for their arrest? I'm charging both Frank and Jesse James with assault with attempt to murder. Bad they didn't finish it. Jesse? Yes, while my back was turned. Nice shooting. If you'll swear in me and my men as deputies, we won't bother you anymore. We'll bring in these buckaroos ourselves. Tonight. It's Jesse. He's in trouble. No. What did he do? Uh, Uncle Ruth! You know that cuss words I told you to take out? Put him back in. Uncle Ruth! Uncle Ruth! What we got to do is chip in some money, whatever we can afford, and and send down to St. Louis for a lawyer. We bought our land, built our homes, and raised our crops. And if we have to give them up, we got a right to a fair price for them. You're right. Somebody done something. We don't want any trouble, Jesse. Well, not unless they start it, Ma. What we need is somebody that knows the law, to tell us our rights and how to protect them. Jesse's right. We need a lawyer. Jesse! Frank! Jesse! Frank! Jesse! Frank! Boys, you gotta get out of here. They already got a warrant for you, and they're headed here now. So you gotta skip out both here. I told Pinky to get your horses ready. Ain't nobody going to arrest me. Uh, I ain't gonna run. Now, now, listen, Jesse. Oh, listen to the major, Frank. Don't you understand? You ain't got a chance. The St. Louis Midlands got this whole state hog died. They got the police, they got the courts, they got everything. A trial right now would be a joke. The railroad's got too much at stake to let two little farmer boys like you and Frank Bollock sings up. Well, we got a right to defend ourselves. Well, sure, Ma. But... Yes, they do. What the Major says, he's right. All you gotta do is hide out like get the governor or, or somebody to give you a fair trial, that's all. But if we run away, Jesse, then... please go like the Major says. If you don't, it'll be in trouble. I know it will. I couldn't stand it. I'm not well enough. Oh, so please. Go. The horse is ready at the back gate. 
All right, Ma, if it'll make you feel any better. Oh, be awful careful, son. Now, don't worry, Ma. Take care of him, Frank. Yes, Ma. Goodbye, Jesse. Frank, Frank. Goodbye, Ma. Major Pinky will know where we are. Pinky? Yes, I knows where it is. Be careful, boys. Be careful. Go down the road a piece and wait. There's apt to be a freight just here. Just let us men handle it. Go on, step along now. Just get right down there. Now, men, listen to me. Yes. Let me do all the talking. Yes, Major. Here they come. Good evening, gentlemen. Where's the James boys? We got a warrant for them, Major. They ain't here. They're gone. And if you want to know who got them away, it was me. Easy, Major. Be sure Major. On, Major. Be Easy, sure Major. Get out of the way. Just a minute, Mr. Marshy. You have my word for it. The boys are gone. Your word. <laughs> come out, Frank and Jesse James. Come out, or we'll come in and pull you out. Their mother's bad, sick in bed, and her heart won't stand you mules stomping through the house. Are you going to let this old goat make a fool out of you? He says they ain't there. I ain't. Well, I got a way to find that out. Lynch! Bring me that mushmelon. Huh. Major! The Major's telling the truth. If you ain't out of there in one minute with your hands up, I'm gonna blow you out. Hey, no, wait, you think Don't I'm lying? Major! They can come in. Let them. Look, there's somebody in there. What did I tell you? The mother, I tell you. Mighty bad. I'm sure sorry. Oh, I'm sorry too. Oh, I wasn't talking about her. She's gone. It's you I'm sorry for. How's everybody? How's everything at home? How's Ma? Jesse. Ma? What happened? Bashi. You mean she's dead? Oh, Jesse. Well, let's go. Jesse, don't you go. I've got to. Oh, no, Jesse, please. You can't help it, Zee. I just got to. Let Frank. Sorry, honey. Frank, make him. Take care of her. What about me? I'm the one he did it to, because I shot him. Well, go ahead. If you don't get him, I will. It might be a long time before I see you again, Zee. I can wait. Bye, honey. Bye, Jesse. from bothering me, that's all.
Keep your hands in sight. Bartender, count three and duck. Yes, sir. Now, wait a minute, Jesse. It was an accident. I swear it was. Count. No, no, I can explain it. I didn't know she was there. I swear it. Keep your hands in sight. One. No. No! Jesse! Two. pocketbook and the spittoon will kindly take it out and wipe it clean before we get to him. No jewelry, folks, just cash. That's every cent I've got in the world. Just teaching that's right on the St. Louis Midland Railroad. Thank you, sir. No man, no jewelry. Thank you. Just the same, though. That's very nice of you, sir. It's a fine-looking pocketbook. Thank you very much, lady. And don't forget to sue the railroad for everything you give us, because it's responsible. Thank you very kindly, sir. Just drop it in the sack and nobody will get hurt. Thank you, brother. Thank you, brother. Have your wallets Thank ready you by the time the gentleman gets to you. Thank you, brother. Don't take all day. Thank you, brother. Sit down. 
Thank you, sir. Thank you kindly. You'll hear about this. No back talk. Thank you, brother. Thank you, brother. Everybody sit quiet and nobody will get hurt. All right, let's go. Lights out. as a cannon right there and says, Brother, we want that mail safe. Where was the protection we're entitled to? Where was the law? Just a minute, Cap. I'm just a law and liberty. I don't cover the whole United States. Now, if you want to give me a description of these men... You know as well as I do who it was. Jesse James. Who else picks on my road? Who else would have the nerve? Sure it was, but you don't have to yell about it. I'm not deep. Rain too. Poor boys. <laughs> it's no joke, Jesse. Oh, it's all right, honey. I ain't gonna stay long. And the way I figure it out is as long as they keep running around out there, in here's the safest place for me. Uh, go on, sit down, leave the man alone. But he's taking chances. If I could just think of some way to let you know how wrong you are. It's no use, honey. It's just like I always told you. I hate the railroads. And when I hate, I've got to do something about it. That's the stuff. People ain't hating now they like they used to. <laughs> they're getting soft. I got to admit that I like a man that hauls off and hates good and hard. It's the lawyers, God dang it. It's the lawyers are messing up the whole world. But ten years ago here in Liberty, we didn't have no lawyers and we got along fine. Man killed somebody, then somebody killed him and the marshal shot them all. And that was the end of it. But look at it today. Right here in Liberty, we got hundreds of lawyers, thousands of them. As far as the eye can see, nothing but lawyers. Uncle Ruth. There are only two lawyers in Liberty. Ah, uh, two? Is that all? Well, then they run around too much. God dang it, I'm gonna write me an editorial about that. Roy! Yes, sir? Take an editorial on lawyers. Lawyers? Now, well, that'll do. We'll begin easy. Paragraph. If we are ever to have law and order in the West, the first thing we gotta do is take out all the lawyers and shoot them down like dogs. Paragraph. They're bound to get you someday, Jesse. That's why I hate to see you go out that door. Because I keep thinking of you all the time out there in the hills. Just going on and on to nowhere. Just trying to keep alive. And everybody after you wanting to kill you to get that money. And Jesse, sometimes at night when it's cold and raining, I wake up crying. Because in a dream I saw you lying dead in the mud. Oh, Jesse, I'm so scared. You're the only one that it matters to, Z, one way or the other. You're the only one that means anything to me. I know it was a fool thing to come here, but... I never knew how much I did want to see you. Until I saw you. Just that blameless outrage! Hi, Hi, Oh. Hello, Will. Uh, I thought you was... Uh... Was? Is uh, Z inside? Well, she's... Uh... Good evening, Z. Evening, Will. I thought you went out with the posse. 
I did. I just got back. Did you catch him? Uh, this is Mr. Howard, Will. Mr. Thomas Howard, an old friend of ours. This is the United States Marshal, Mr. Wright. How do you do, Mr. Howard? How do you do? Uh, Mr. Howard's from St. Louis. Yes? Uh, well, I used to live in St. Louis. Uh, what business you in, Mr. Howard? Guns. Guns and horses. Guns and horses, eh? No, we didn't catch him. You couldn't find a white elephant on a night like this. So you used to know Jesse James, you ever tell you? They kind of grew up together. Funny thing about it, she's told me so much, I almost feel knowing myself. You do? Good biscuits, you make them, see? Uh, uh-huh. Try one, Mr. Howard. I don't mean that it ain't after me, understand. I'm still a peace officer if we ever come on each other in the right place. It's just gonna be me or him, one or the other. So I, uh, I understand. What I'm hoping is either he'll stop messing around my district or else keep out of my way. Because it'll save Z some hurt. Either way. You know your job, I guess. I know it and I'm good at it. I'm just as good at my job as he is at his. That's why I'm saying the next time either I'm gonna blow his head off or he's gonna blow mine. I, uh, got a little business up the road a piece, taking about an hour. Maybe I'll drop in again later if your light's on. All right, Will. Good night, Horace Greeley. Uh, huh? Oh, good, good night, Will. <laughs> I, uh, don't expect I'll be seeing you again. No, I, uh, don't expect so. Take care of yourself. Whew. You've got a better grade of law around here than it used to be. Don't waste time, Jesse. Go now. I think I'd better go that way. Blow out the light. I don't want to be a target. Yes. Is that why you won't hire me? I can't help it, Will. Well, let's load him on a horse and take him to town. Fellas, come here and give me a hand. Now get back out of the way, you youngins. This ain't no place for you. Get over on the other side. Is that... No, ma'am. We didn't get the jackpot this time. <laughs> <laughs> they keep on running up that price, and one of Jesse's old men's liable to take a shot at him. Yeah, some of them fellas that scalped their own mall for a lot less than $5,000. <laughs> now let him down on this side. as pretty as I think you are. Oh, Jesse, read this. Read it. Will arranged it. I asked him to. I can't do that, Z. Why not? I... I trust Will, but... He's given his word. He's promised. He'll see that it works out all right. But Jesse, listen. It isn't only now, although that's bad enough. It's what's going to happen to you inside of you. You understand? I mean, well, right now you're a hero to yourself and a lot of other people, too. It's a fight you're in, and it's the railroad that started it. But that's not going to last, Jesse. The more luck you have, the worse you'll get. Shooting and robbing, it'll get in your blood, Jesse. You'll get like a wolf. Just doing it because it's your nature. That'll be your appetite for shooting and robbing until something happens to you. 
And if anything ever happened to you, Jesse, it'd be like it was happening to me, too. Oh, darling, there's only one way out. Come in. Give up. Let me draw a free breath of you. I can't see. I'd go crazy in prison. I, I couldn't do it. But if we went away now... That's all there is to it, Jesse. Bye. But see, please. Good luck. You said you'd wait. However long it took. Well, would you marry me now, before? Today, if you want me to. And that's the way, I guess. The only way. Sister? Thank you, sir. Sit down. Uh, just find a seat anywhere. Could then we get hitched? Huh? Uh, married. Uh, you ain't, ain't eloping, are you? How's that? Oh, no, sir. I'm grown. And we're in a kind of hurry, if you don't mind. Oh, uh, your brothers? I have no brothers. Uh, sorry. Uh, what's your name, sister? Zerelda Cobb. And your son? Jesse Woodson James. Jesse Wood... Jesse James! Thank the Lord! Sit down. Yes, sir, and we don't want no trouble. Trouble? Why, son, you're as welcome as rain to the flowers. Do you realize, boy, that I had a farm giving 900 bushels of corn until that railroad had taken it from me? Why? I'd given up preaching and was making an honest living off the land until that dag swing railroad swindled me out of my own home. Well, that's true, Mr. James. By golly, son, do you know I had a big house, two barns, three outhouses until that gall danged railroad hunswoggled me. Amen. Amen. All right. We're gathered here to join Zerelda Cobb and Jesse Woodson James in the bonds of holy matrimony. Howdy, Jesse. Howdy, Will. I uh, guess Z explained things. She said they're willing to go light. From the way they talk, they're so glad to get rid of you, they'll be able to make you a conductor on the road. What do you think I'll get? Two, three years, maybe five. It won't be much. All they're charging you with is that little old deep port Pine Hills that you knocked over last April. That one they got proof on. Much obliged for all you've done. Don't mention it. Shall we go? Jesse? Howdy. Judge? Howdy. Jesse? Major. 
You ain't got no more guns on you, have you? No. Nope. All right. You're doing the wise thing, son. Am I? Well, Judge Matthews here is going to try your case, son. You can trust him, all right. <laughs> I'm aiming to go as light as the law allows. And when you come out, the slate will be clean. The past will all be forgotten. Thank you, Judge. Well, Jesse, if you're ready. Well, I... All right, Jesse. You ain't worried, are you, kid? I can do it on my head. Good boy. You know, my darling. My wife. My husband. Oh, I'm proud of you, dear. Proud of you. Bye, Z. Goodbye. I'll be waiting. Yes, sir, you can go right in. Mr. James? Oh. I'm Mr. McCoy, president of the railroad. Oh, yes, I know who you are, Mr. McCoy. I just want to welcome you and tell you how glad I am to see you here in jail. Mr. Wright, the peace officer here. Mr. Clark, the state prosecutor. How do you do? Well? Well, we're going to try to hang our lawless friend, of course. Before or after the trial? Well, the penalty for murder is death, isn't it? That wasn't the idea. The idea? That wasn't the idea. You gave me a James of the girl. What became of that? Now, get this straight, Wright. When you're dealing with a criminal, anything goes. Anything that'll trap him. James is a thief and a murderer. The most notorious bandit and outlaw in America. He has burned my property, robbed my trains, and scared people out of riding in my cars. Three years ago, I swore he'd hang for what he'd done, and by the almighty, he is going to hang. That still ain't the way things are done around here. Just a minute. You're a peace officer, aren't you? But not a skunk. You explain all this to Judge Matthews? It won't be necessary, my boy. He's been superseded by Judge Rankin of St. Louis, who's not so sentimental about train robbers. He arrives tonight. The trial's tomorrow morning. Anything else? A nice frame, eh? And while we're about it, Marshal, it might be better for you if you drop this role of attorney for the defense and confine yourself to the duties of your office. Who? Me? Any interference on your part? It ain't me you gotta worry about. What do you mean? Suppose Jesse don't want to be hanged. Oh. <laughs> Roy, stop the press! Take a new editorial on railroad presence. Yes, sir. Paragraph. If we are ever to have law and order in the West, the first thing we got to do is take out all the railroad presidents and shoot them down like dogs. Paragraph. Where's Z? Where you been? Up to Pine Ridge, sent me. Where's Z? Z? Yes. She's out. Out where? Well, she set out. At I wouldn't want this to go any further, you understand? I understand. Well, she set out for the hills. Alone? Not exactly alone. She was being guided by a donkey named Pinky on a mule named Stinky. I see. Oh. 
Halt! Who goes there? It's me, Pinky. All right, Pinky, what do you want? I've got a letter here from Mr. McCoy. Give me. A letter from Mr. McCoy. Is you sure you'll get it, sir? You'll get it. Yes, sir. For Mr. McCoy. Mr. McCoy. For Mr. McCoy. We want the trial to get started as early as possible. <laughs> Judge, read that. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> Mr. McCoy, if Jesse ain't out of jail by midnight, I'm a coming in and get him. Frank James. <laughs> Well, that gives us an hour and a half. Oh, it's up the nerve of you. Oh. What ails you? It's this note. What about it? I don't know if you gents know it or not, but, well, both these James boys does things. What are you driving at? I've known Frank James a long time. When he says he aims to do something, he's liable to come putting near doing it. Now, what on earth do you think he can do? He says he's going to take Jesse out of here. I wish he'd try it. We'd grab him, too. Of course we would. You're crazy. He's a mighty set man, Frank is. Ah. Oh. Have you heard about this ridiculous note? The word you got around. You mean everybody knows about it? Everybody I met. And they all regard it as a very interesting situation. Interesting? Why, it's preposterous. What do they think a few ragged pants bandits can do? Don't they know this is a brick jail surrounded and guarded by United States soldiers? Don't they know we could hold this jail against an army of outlaws? They do. That's what makes it so interesting. But they know, too, that both the James boys are mighty set in their ways. Mighty set. That's what I told him. Didn't I tell you to shut up? How many deputies have you got? Six on call, but I could swear in as many more as you want. That's it. That's what we'll do. We won't wait for the rascal. We'll go out and get him. Well, we could try. You think he'll really come? No, don't you? Oh, sure. He wouldn't fool around about a thing like this. He's probably on his way now. Well, well let's not waste time. Swear in some good men surround the town. Tell them to take him dead or alive. Tell them to shoot first and ask questions later. Tell them... Am I telling you how to run your railroad? What do you mean? Well, don't try to tell me how to take a man. Just a minute, Marshal. Where are you going? Going to swear in some good men. Wait, I'll go with you. I'm not a bad hand at picking men myself. Whatever you say, Cap, is exactly what I'm going to do. Turn out all your men. Cover the whole town. It's a utterly ridiculous situation. But by cracky, I'm not going to take any chances. Mighty, mighty set. Five dollars. One to three, he will. Ten dollars, he won't. Twelve dollars even money, either way. I've got ten dollars, one to five, that Frank James will fight Mr. McCoy in the lake. <laughs> I want some deputies, some volunteer deputies, who've got to be able to shoot straight the first time. Or else. For Frank? For whoever I say. But if anybody here's got a mercenary streak, I might add that Mr. McCoy here is talking about doubling the pot for whoever rings the bell. Ten thousand dollars? All right, boys, line up the bar so we can get a look at you. I'm here, deputy. You and you. Ed, you all right. Bill, get over there. You. And you. And you. And you. Charlie, you're a good man with a gun. I don't like it. What's the matter with the big fellow? Oh, nothing I don't know of. And him. All right. And you? And these two. All right, you're the doctor. All right, men, face me, raise your right hands and take the oath. Up a little higher. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen.
wild goose chase. I don't care how many he brings. He won't be able to get to town, much less this building. No, the whole thing's a bluff. Well, it's 12 o'clock. Nothing's happening. You... You... I couldn't help it. I'm just nervous, that's all. Frank said he was going to give it to 12 to let Jesse out. And if he wasn't out by then... That's Jesse. Well, stop him. I'll stop him, but it won't do no good. It's dead certain Frank's coming now. And Jesse feels it. That's the way them boys is. No matter what happens tonight, fire or flood, I'm going to have that man fired tomorrow. They jumped him in the woods. Who? Who got him? Two of them deputies. How old of them gall dang dat blasted gall burn deputies? Roy! Yes, sir. Ah, I just want to thank the young man for simplifying one of our worst problems. Take him in there. I sure am sorry, Frank. Any guns on you? I got it. I sure wasn't looking for this. Come on, son. Frank. Sorry. It's all right, Marshal. You understand, this ain't any of my doing. I just want you and Jesse to know that all the honor and credit for this victory of law and order goes to Mr. McCoy. We understand. Is that all, Marshal? That's all, thank you. Then get out of here. Get out and stay out. For a peace officer, your attitude has been incredible. And make no doubt it'll be reported to the governor tomorrow. You mean you won't want me anymore tonight? Neither tonight or any other day or night. Is that official? It is. Sorry, Will. We didn't aim to get you over a barrel. Forget it, son. The way I figure, that barrel's gonna be mighty crowded before this night's over. Good night, everybody. Good night, Marshal. Pretty smart, aren't you? You ought not to have done this, Mr. McCoy. No? You ought not to try to trick Jesse and me when we were trusting you. You ought to kept your word. Oh, the way you're gonna keep your word? Sir? Well, you said you were gonna take Jesse out of here. <laughs> But I am. Hey, Jesse? That you, Frank? It's me. You all right? You're a cool one. Getting along just fine, Frank. He'll be glad to see you, too. Lock the door, Tom. Soldiers! Take it easy, boy. Now I'm timing. No noise, understand? We don't aim to kill a soul if we can help it, but the first man that hollers, all you gotta do is to keep your hands up and your mouth shut. Everything's gonna be all right. You'll never get away with this in the world. I know it and I told you. Lay down. Lay down and be shot down. What happened? Mr. McCoy was kind enough to deputize Tom and Hank. On purpose? I guess he just didn't have any better sense. Well, what is this, a game? Grown men playing on the floor like children. Ain't it the truth? They wouldn't have it any other way. Remember it? Don't. Don't kill me. I ain't. Not with a gun. And, brother, I'm going to worry you to death. Not chew. See how it tastes. And swallow. Chew! 
You look like a man that's got good sense. Just name it, friend, and I'll do it. You'll do it if you don't want your pants full of lead. All you got to do is name it. Give him a glass of water as soon as we're gone to wash it down. Everybody's set? All you got to do is to throw that door open when I say the word and then step back. You don't have to tell me to step back. Don't hurt nobody, you know. Come on, don't forget to throw a few rounds down the street just for the fun of it. Ready? Open it. He played fair. He did everything he promised. So you gotta keep your part of the bargain. And stick to him, honey. Cause you're the only hope there is for him. I'll stick, all right. Miss Z, is we got everything? Oh, I... I think so, Pinky. Yes, sir. Goodbye, Uncle Ru. Goodbye, honey. Let's go. Play Pony Express. You like the curtains? Well, they're just as pretty as they can be. I made them. Oh, my goodness, see, I... I never expected ever to have a house as nice as this one. I made that, too. God bless our home. Well, say, that's better than you can get in a store, see? That's a mighty pretty frame, too. Oh, Pinky made that. Huh? Good work, Pinky. Uh, thank you, Mr. Jesser. Oh, it sure is fine, Z. The whole place. I'm just as proud of you as I can be. Eat it. Good evening. 
I'm looking for the Wilson. Do you know where they live? About a mile on up the road. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah. Pack. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Pack, we're getting out of here. But it was only a farmer. How do you know? She's weak, of course, but she's only... You're a friend of Mr. Howard's, aren't you? You might say so. Have you any idea of where he is? He travels a lot. Salesman? Uh, something like that. Well, you can tell him for me. Any husband who would stay away from a wife at a time like this, I can't say I've got any use for him. There's a lot in what you say. You can go up, but don't stay long. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Ain't he the dad blamedest, cutest little cuss that I've ever <laughs> Now, honey, you mustn't blame Jesse for not getting here. Maybe he just couldn't get away. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Oh, honey, you, you shouldn't feel that way about it. I can't help it. I'm too tired to care. This is the way it always is. We live like animals. Scared animals. We move. We hide. We don't dare go out. All day and all night we just sit. Scared of a shadow in a window. Scared of a footstep on a porch. Scared of a door opening. And when he's away, it's worse. All I can think of is, is he dead? Is he lying dead in the mud in the woods? Maybe he's dead now. Oh, Uncle Ruth, I want to go home. Your home, Z. This is your home. Yours and Jess's. I mean home with you. Back to Liberty. Will you take me? But I mean, doggone it. I... But Jesse promised. Yes, I know. And I used to believe him. But he'd never change. Jesse will be an outlaw as long as he lives. I know it now. He's wild, Will. He's like a horse you can't break. He's crazy with wildness, and there's nothing either you or me or him or anybody else can do about it. That's why all last night I wanted to die. I prayed and prayed that I'd die. And my baby, I, I prayed that he'd die too and end it all. Darling, Mommy didn't mean that, honey. Oh, my precious baby, Mommy didn't mean that, honey. Shh, shh, shh. That's, that's, that's all right, honey. I'll... I'll take you home. I'll...
Hi, Pinky. Z. Oh, Mr. Jesse. Yes? She's gone. Gone? Gone where? Oh, and the baby. The baby? A... Yes, sir. Was she... Were they all right? Oh, yes, sir. They are all right, both of them. But she's gone now. The Major come and took them away back to Liberty. But she has a letter she gave me to give to you, sir. I tried to get here, Pinky, but I, I just couldn't. They got after me and... Did you see him? <laughs> Mr. Jesse is the cutest little old thing I ever did see. Jesse yelling and hollering so it nearly busts your ears. <laughs> I bet he's the loudest yelling baby that ever was born. <laughs> what color eyes he got, Pinky? Blue. Red, big old blue eyes, big as a saucer, <laughs> looking right at you, sir. <laughs> Does he look like Z? Like you. No. <laughs> He's a spitting image of you, Mr. Jesse. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I think so. Except me, he's bald. He's bald as a peeled egg. But my goodness, Mr. Jesse, that sure is one cute little old baby. Hello, you dog. Just yell and wave little old arm. <laughs> dog. Yes, sir, we're all mighty proud of that baby. <laughs> Lord, Lord. Well, I guess we'd better go after him, Pinky. When did they leave? They left. Monday. On the train? No, sir. In the Major's buggy. Oh. I don't like that. Well, we'll have some supper and then we'll go after him. But, Mr. Jesse. Yes? I don't know if I'd go after him right now. No? Why not? They got that Mr. Wright with him. Wright? Yes, sir. The police marshal. He come, too. I see. Never mind the supper, Pinky. We'll start right now. You mean after? Yes, right now. say about being unhappy? It was just like I told you, Mr. Jesse. She says she's scared all the time, and I know she cried a lot. She says she don't know how she could stand it. I see. I guess I can't blame her. That's just what she says. I guess it was pretty bad for her. Yes, sir, I guess it was. Pinky, I'm not going any further. You mean you ain't going after him? I've changed my mind. She's right. There ain't any happiness to be found with me. If you can find it at all, it's... it's without me. Yes. Tell her that. Tell her I ain't gonna bother her anymore. If she can be happy now, I'm... I'm glad. Tell her that. Two. Yes, sir. And Pinky, tell her. Yes, sir. Tell her not to let the baby know anything about me. I won't mind.
we got to do is take out all the dentists. Help! Help! Save me! Save me! Save me! And shoot them down like dogs. Ah, uh, but they're great fun. <laughs> How old is he? Just five. You don't say. Mine's going on three. Wait a minute. Here, can you have a piece? Uh, yes. Ah, uh, say thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Ah, you're welcome. <laughs> Wonderful child. <laughs> thank you. Hello. You the editor, sir? I am, sir. What can I do for you, my friend? I want to run this card in your next issue. Uh, George Remington, Remington Bluing Company, Philadelphia. Uh, now at Dixie Bell Hotel. Uh -huh. How much, sir? Oh, I guess about a dollar will cover it, Mr. Remington. There you are. Thank you, sir. And thank you very much. Uh, Goodbye. 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 Yes, Except this, by the way. Uh, didn't that fellow Jesse James come from somewheres around here? He did? Why? Then I suppose that you're protesting against this amnesty offer by the governor, aren't you? What amnesty offer? Haven't you heard? Well, sir, it's an outrage. In Jefferson City the other day, a friend of mine, a banker, was telling me about it. The governor has promised amnesty, a clean pardon to any member of the James gang that will kill Jesse. And that's in addition to the reward. Are you sure of that? Positive, sir. But that makes the state a party to murder. Exactly what I say. Ah, that dirty, rotten, filthy. <clears throat> Thank you, sir. Thank you for the news. Not at all, sir. Not at all. I just have time to get it into this week's edition. See. And an editorial. Please, that don't prove anything. He might have got it all wrong. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter to me. That's all over now. Roy, you got that editorial on Dennis started yet? Yes, sir. Well, change it from Dennis to Governors and finish it like the one I did last week on Horse Thieves, except this time it's Governors. I'm not selling anything. You're Mrs. Bob Ford, aren't you? Well, I'm Mrs. Ford, all right, but after it's about my husband, I don't know anything. I ain't seen him in months. He rid off with them James boys, and I ain't seen hair and a hide of them since. It's not him I was looking for, Mrs. Ford. It's you. I got this here Liberty paper yesterday, and it's got some news in it that might interest you. And uh, here's my card. That's all. What is it? You know, I can't read. What's it say? Well? The bank at Northfield, Minnesota, is the strongest bank in the Northwest. It's wide open for us. We've got $50,000 in gold in the safe. All we've got to do is walk in with a shovel and help ourselves. So that's what we're going to do. Well? Well, uh, as a matter of fact, Jesse, I... Well? Well, hey, what is this, anyhow? For more than a month, there's been something funny going on around here. Now, what is it? Well, to tell you the truth, Jesse, we don't exactly know if we like this idea or not. 
For one thing, that's a mighty strong bank at Northfield, and it's a long ways away. And for another... Go on. Well, I've been talking it over with some of the boys, and, uh, and, uh, well, you're taking chances, Jesse, that we don't like. Now, I ain't no coward, and you know it. But some of the things you got us into, it, it scared the living daylights out of me. You're taking too many chances. Shut up. Go on. We all know you got your troubles. Forget that. And maybe you don't care if you get shot full of buckshot or not. But the way we feel about it, we got a lot of respect for you, Jesse, and you know it. But the way you're going on is just like you was trying to commit suicide. And just who do you think you are? Now listen, Jesse. Go on, reach. Oh, you talked things over, did you? And who are you? The captain of this band? Who's handling these jobs, you or me or somebody else? Well, I'll tell you if you don't know, it's me. I'm doing it, see? And I'll ride up the Capitol steps if I feel like it. So you talked it over, huh? Without me. Well, I don't like it. And it ain't the way I aim to have things. If that's the way you want it, I give you a leaf now, all of you, to talk it over again. Now, outside. Go on, get out! Now, listen here, Jesse. Yes, and you too. You talked it over with him. Think I need you? Any of you? You think I can't get a thousand men to come in tomorrow morning with Jesse James? Well, if you don't, you're crazy. Now, get out! He acts like he's going crazy. Uh, he gets worse every day. I'll kill him for that if it's my last act. Wait for me down to the creek. I want to talk to him. Well? First place, Jesse, I just want you to understand I ain't a scared of you and I ain't a scared of your guns. So if you get to feeling like shooting, you just start drawing, I'll start drawing too. Is that what you came back to tell me? No, that's just to clear your conscience if you get to feel ornery. I'll remember. What I come back to tell you was you're a skunk. Want to draw? Go on. You're mean, Jesse, and you're getting meaner every day. I don't know if you're going crazy or not, but sometimes it looks like it. Ever since you come back from St. Joe, it's been looking like it. For one thing, there ain't enough money in the world to take the chances you've been making us take the last year or two. And for another, you wouldn't be slapping an old friend like Tom and him a slow draw if you was in your right mind. So you're either crazy or you're a skunk. Go on, draw if you feel like it. You go on. You're my brother, Jesse, my kid brother, and I reckon I love you. But it ain't proven anything to let you get my head blowed off, or your own. I know how you feel about what happened after the baby was born. And I know you don't like to get talked to this way. But it's either this or it's see you get blammed right out of your pants. Somebody had to tell you before it was too late. So, what do you figure you want to do about it? I'm sorry, Frank. Want me to fetch him back? Can you? Sure, I can. Frank. Hmm? Much obliged. You're welcome, kid. Is it? Bob? It's me. Come in. Where's everybody? I'll be back after a while. The 
the matter with you? Nothing. Sit down. Nothing's the matter. I've been to see my wife. I know. Hi, Bob. Hi, Helen. Hi, Bob. I'm sorry. It's all right, Jesse. I understand. North feels all right with us. Good. We'll get going at daylight. North feels 450 miles from here. We ought to make it by Friday. We'll hold up just outside of town overnight and jump the bank about noon on Saturday. And if it's as rich as they say it is, why, maybe we can all retire then. Sound all right to everyone? Yes, you I'm with you, lively. Jesse. That's fine. Very fine. Thank you. You're welcome. Mr. Layworth? Right over there, sir. Thank you. Mr. Layworth? Yes. My card? Oh, I'm glad to meet you, Mr. Runyon. What can I do for you? First, read this. And what does it mean? It's the James Gang. They're on their way here. Here? The James Gang? Mm hmm. The James Gang? To rob my bank? That's it. Great! Thunder and hallelujah! That's ruin! They'll take everything! I've got $50,000! Shh! Easy, easy. There's no danger. Don't you see? I'm here. Yeah, but. but... Cousin Bushrod. Well, if it ain't Cousin Beauregard. Howdy, Cousin. How are you? Well, I'll be doggone. Beauregard ain't seen you in a coon's age. Come on in the bank with me. I gotta change some money. How's Aunt Mary Lou? How's the twins? Safe. Will you wait, please? Oh, 
no use. Come on, Jesse! You gotta keep going, son. Hold on. Now hold tight, Jesse, because there's only one way out of here. Are you holding on? Hurry up. He's in here somewhere. the eight bandits who attempted the raid on the Northfield Bank, two are dead and four are prisoners, but of the two leaders there is less definite news. Reports yesterday indicated that Frank James had made good his escape, but of Jesse James there is no news at all. The belief is that he was drowned, but if he escaped, he is thought to be badly wounded and unable to travel far. Oh, read that blasted golfing city police. Roy! Yes, sir? I'm gonna write me an editorial. If he escaped. You gotta stop it, see? You got to. I know it. He ain't the Jesse you knew and loved. That fellow's gone, gone a long time ago. I could have liked him, too, but not this fella. Not this bad one. This one I could, well, if I ever come on him again. If he escaped... Can't you understand, Z? He's no good. It's like I told you that time. Once you let yourself go the way he did, you can't stop. He ain't a knight anymore fighting a bad railroad. He's a wild animal. You can't love him. Nobody can. Why, everybody that liked him, he's done wrong, too. And with his men gone, he hasn't a friend left. Not a friend in the world. That's right, too, isn't it? Not a friend in the world. Oh. 
Hey. Hey, you. You. We're here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very kindly. Do you think you can make it? Yeah. Do you need some help? No, I'm all right. You don't need it. You do. Z, is it really you? Oh, I knew if you could, you'd come here. That's why I came. I knew you'd come. What's left of me? But I'll get you well. Wait. Jesse. Doggone. It's Daddy. My son. Oh, Mommy! Well, Daddy's been hurt, dear, but he'll be all right. I'll be doggone. Doggone. Don't you think he's big for five? Does he... Does he know anything about me yet? No. Not yet. Is it... Is it too late? Could we... Could we still go away? To California? No, it isn't too late. We'll go just as soon as you get well. Pinky's gone to get the doctor now. Oh, Jesse, I do love you so. Take care of all that, darling. Ah, uh, see. Kind of happy, ain't you? Aren't you? 
Oh, Jesse, if we were just leaving today, this very hour. Nothing's going to stop us, honey. Oh, I hope not. But I'm scared, Jesse. I'll be scared every second until we're on our way. Maybe until we get to California. Well, we, we won't have any money, remember? That money that I hid in the No, I don't want you to talk about that anymore. We'll make money. Money we won't be ashamed of. Well, I wasn't ashamed of that. Now night. stop it, I say. Uh, Mr. Howard. Yes? There's two gentlemen to see you, sir. What do they want? You knows them, sir. Oh. All right. He's human, ain't he? Well, sir, hello, Bob. How are you? I'm all right, I reckon. How are you, Jesse? Well, I'm still toting some lead around inside of me, but it doesn't bother me any. This here's my brother, Charlie. Hello, Charlie. How are you? Oh, Pinky. Yes, sir. some coffee. Yes, sir. Sit down, Bob. You look like you come a long way. It's fine. I escaped. They couldn't hold me. Me and two fellas you don't know jumped over a wall. How'd you know where I was? We seen Frank. He sent us. That's what we come to see you about. How's Frank? Where is he? He's fine. He's up in the hills. He's aiming to come down pretty soon. That's what he wanted us to see you about. Jesse! Are you going to be long? You remember Bob Ford, honey. That's his brother, Charlie. How are you, Mrs. Z? Are you going to be long? Go on now. Stop your fret, and I'll be up in just a minute. What Frank wanted us to tell you, he says if you feel strong enough, he wants you to meet him. To the flat bank. No. I'm going to California. Frank's mighty anxious. Sorry. My mind's made up. Why, there ain't even a marshal in the town. There's a farm payroll there on the 7th. Frank's got three men that know the business. You don't think it'll be any trouble at all. Just walk in and take it. You got plenty of money to get a start in California. You don't even need to think about it. But if it was to need a bank loan, well, why? I haven't got much money. Hardly any money at all. What else did Frank say? He says it's the easiest job he ever seen. He says it won't take more than a day to look it over. And then if you're set on going to the coast, you got some money. I sure could use some money. The way this is, it's just like picking it up off the ground. When do you want to meet me? He says right away. Daddy! Daddy! I want to come in! I want to come in! He can't swim! All right, come on in, but stop that hollering. Frank figures we ought to clear about two thousand apiece. Sure could use two thousand dollars. Daddy, Daddy! Oh, those kids. Just a minute. Now, excuse me, Mr. James. Howard. Are you going to walk around outside with them guns? No. You're right. Mr. Howard, we just killed him. That's part of the game. If he's such a little fellow, you shouldn't play so rough with him. But that's the way you gotta play outlaw. See, Jesse James has gotta die. I'll die, but they stick me with sticks. Just shoot me, don't stick me. Bang, 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 bang. bang. You're Jesse James, you're dead. I'm dead. Go home, boys.
We're catching the afternoon train. Pinky can follow with whatever we can't carry. That suit you? Oh, thank goodness, Jesse. I'm sorry, Bob. Tell Frank I'm sorry, too, but I'll write to him from California. You mean he ain't gonna come with us? That's it. Well, what'll Frank say to that? Can't make much difference what he says. I ain't going to him, and that's all there is to it. Bye, Charlie. Nice to meet you. Bye, Bob, and I'm sorry that you had to come all the way up here for nothing. What'll we tell Frank? Just tell him he better come join me while the joining's still good. Oh, Mr. Howard, we've got to run, for we're going to California. With the banjo on our knee. <laughs> Honey, what can I do to help? Oh, Jesse, that. Oh, I bet you like it. Z. Because we're going to California on the train this afternoon. <laughs> about it. Jesse was an outlaw, a bandit, a criminal. Even those that loved him ain't got no answer to that. But we ain't ashamed of him. I don't know why, but I don't think even America is ashamed of Jesse James. Maybe it's because he was bold and lawless, like we all of us like to be sometimes. Maybe it's because we understand a little that he wasn't altogether to blame for what his times, maybe. Maybe it's because for ten years he licked the tar out of five states. Or maybe it's because he was so good at what he was doing. I don't know. All I do know is he was one of the doggondest, gall-dingest, dad-blamedest buckaroos that ever rode across these United States of America. Loving remembrance, Jesse W. James died April 3rd, 1882, aged 34 years, 6 months, 28 days, murdered by a traitor and coward whose name is not worthy to appear here. <laughs>